Hey, so in this video, we'll be doing the Easter eggs from Breakfast for Season 5, Episode 18 of Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Super Wars. Well, they're not cut up. So the e first Easter egg was when Fitz was trying to convince Ruby to let Simmons go. He says, I'm engineering, she's biotech, which is the same thing that uh, she, they, he said to Ward uh, when we first met, met them in uh, the pilot. So I really like that callback there. And this is not a real Easter egg or reference or whatever, whatever but there, it's more of opinion, in my opinion. And I, if you have a different one than mine, comment down below. Or if you have a uh, the the same opinion, comment down below. But just be nice about, like, don't be rude about it. But what I'm talking about is uh, how uh, Fitz and Simmons' relationship. I don't want to say it's a toxic relationship. I don't know what the right word is right now. But it is a very overprotective relationship because they're willing to sacrifice uh, the world just to so so they can actually keep their love alive. And that's a very selfish relationship, like very selfish decision, especially when you know that the, the world is at stake. And they like outright say that they're outright going to uh, help Ruby because they don't want to, um, they can't live without one another. So it's a very codependent, uh, overprotective relationship. Uh, so yeah, and it's a very hypocritical situation, especially when uh, Fitz is saying that he. Uh, she he could not make a hard hard choice of killing Fit or Simmons or whatever, but you're he's willing to risk Daisy's life to save the world, but he's not willing to risk Simmons' life for the world. So it's a very hypocritical situation there, and it's not the first time Fitz has done something similar to this, where he was willing to risk uh, bringing Hive back to Earth just to save Simmons' life. So it's a very, like I keep on saying, it's a very hypocritical, uh, toxic uh, relationship. I, I know, I know that's probably not the right word. Just but comment down below if I, if you have a different opinion on that matter, or whatnot. But yeah, and I'm assuming because they're talk, they keep talking about uh, making the harder choices, like Simmons said in uh, the, what's called, the couple episodes ago. And they have made this decision that it's never, it's not going to be a, it's going to be, it's too hard of a choice to actually kill one and like one another. At some point, Simmons is going to, Simmons or Fitz are going to have to make that hard choice of sacrificing one another, one, one another uh, to actually save the world. But I don't know when that's going to happen. But as of right now, it is a very hypocritical situation. And it's just, I, I know a lot of people love that relationship. It's just, I've never been a big uh, shipper. Uh, so like, it's it's cute sometimes, but in this situation, not really. And there was a bit of a plot twist in this episode where we it was revealed that Max actually the one that starts building the artificial gravity for the Zephyr One, which we all assumed it was gonna be Fitz and Simmons once they got back from the past, but it turns out no. Uh, at least for right now, Max is the one starting the building, uh, building it. And I do like that they brought back. Uh, Col uh, they referenced Coulson's life in the framework because Coulson's life wasn't very like very drastic change in a way. Like his personality still was a jokey character and all that kind of stuff. He still was a mentor, a mentor figure, a teacher, and all that kind of stuff. So there wasn't as something nothing drastic happened. So them actually being able to joke about being a Professor Coulson and all that kind of stuff. Uh, was actually nice to, and I actually really appreciate that. And speaking of jokes, Coulson and Mac and Deke are talking about uh, their love life, and what, or Deke's trying to like trying to uh, get information about how to uh, approach Daisy's uh, Daisy and his feelings for her. Uh, and uh, there was actually a, a joke. I'm surprised they actually made this, and I'm pretty sure it was most likely because it was it it was a it was an intentional joke. But they made a Ford a joke joke about drugs on the on 420. Uh, so where he's saying maybe that's why drugs are bad because he's didn't he didn't realize he actually he actually uh, confessed to having feelings for Daisy last episode. So I really really appreciate how they were able to put that joke in this episode. But yeah, and I'm surprised they didn't realize this before or like the first time I watched it. But when Talbot was talk, uh, he he says talking to himself, and he says we need every weapon in this fight, which is the same thing that Kale said. 
So I'm assuming the reason I never really like clicked into clicked into that was because I was so scared that uh, Polly was gonna die. But what he, what he was referring to was uh, Hale needed Robin's uh, future seeing powers so he she could be one leg up against the Confederation. So once the Confederation actually stopped helped stop the whatever alien invasion is coming. Uh, he she could turn on them, and used, and used uh, Robin against them. So yeah. And I'm, actually I'm surprised that they haven't said this in a while. I can't can't remember any time after season one, episode fifteen, I believe, with Lady Sif and Lorelai. But in this episode, they, uh, Ma Mac or Daisy is trying to, uh, get hand a gun to May, and she says. If I need one, I'll take one, which is her slogan from season one, so I really appreciate that. And going back to Col uh, Robin, we see a couple drawings that were actually obvious this episode. There were a lot of little individual drawings that I could not make out. Uh, so if you if you could tell what some of them were, comment down below. But the two main ones that they actually made a focus on that I haven't talked about in a previous video is that there was a drawing with... Uh, Two people surrounded by blood, and then a bunch of people on the uh, not like a on the other side of of the drawing. And uh, Talbot is mumbling uh, "Red Rum," which is a reference to uh, the Shining, which is uh, actually the uh, word "murder" backwards. So it's a possibility that it was foreshadowing the events of this episode where uh, Yo Yo killed Rob uh, Ruby and. Uh, Ruby accidentally killed uh, Strucker because there were two people around blood and all that kind of stuff and a bunch of people on the other side. So it's a possibility that's who they were referring to. Uh, so, yeah. And uh, there was another one where they were joking uh, joking around and whatnot about this one drawing because they uh, Mac refuses to believe this drawing was of Zephyr 1. And, and we... We as the audience know that Zephyr 1 did go into space, so that drawing of Zephyr 1 was actually that of them in episode 9. So I really appreciate that they, they did that there, because uh, Mac had no, like, really, like, no uh, knowledge, really, how they got back, I don't think. So, yeah. And then, uh, there was a bit of a divide between some of the fans right now. Uh, of how Daisy's handling handled a situation in this episode, and how Yo Yo handled the same situation in this episode, where Yo Daisy was trying to uh, like recruit da uh, Ruby in a way to Shield, and a lot of people were mad that she wasn't going to use her powers. Which in this situation, her powers would not be useful, especially with Gravitonium in the way. If they were or er, er, were going to get a, into a fight. Gra uh, gravity, gravitonium, and quake powers would probably be a very dangerous situation. So it was a bit, it was a, a smart move for Daisy to approach her in a way that she learned from Coulson. Because her, though Daisy, we know, is a product of her, uh, the rela relationship uh, she's had with Coulson. Because Coulson, uh, he said, Daisy says, Coulson didn't give up on me. Uh, so and and it's not her uh, Ru Ruby's fault for the way she uh, is the way she is, and but there was a similar uh, line in episode f episode five of season one where Ward is ca talking to Coulson and he says you can't save someone from themselves, sir, and he replies you can if you get get to them early enough, which from that there on then. Then on there, like there, there then, uh, I you know what I mean. Uh, like he, uh, from then on, she actually had that mentality of, okay, not everyone is a bad guy and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and I think it her personality amplified that pers side personality side of her amplified once she was in the framework. Speaking of the framework with the Coulson and all that kind of stuff. Because she's, when she was in the framework, she witnessed uh, two different people with two different personalities, two, like, 
to to an extreme of who they were in in the real world. We had a good a good ward which was never really in the in the real world. We had a bad fits or an evil fits which was never in the real world until after the framework. So having had that experience with that, along with the the conversation which she had with Radcliffe in the framework, where she he says. One person in your life, one decision, one sentence has the power to change your life forever. Yeah, that's right. One sent, one single sentence, like, I love you, or we're having a baby, or she's gone. So her mentality has rooted herself into that uh, persona of maybe she could have saved, uh, could save Ruby's life because she is a, she is a kid per, really, pretty much. We don't know exactly how old she really is. But so she and she wasn't beyond redeemable, redeemable like like I said in a previous video, because she like how it uh, mirrors, uh, mirrors, uh, Ward's journey and, or Ruby's journey mir mirrors uh, Ward's journey. So it she wasn't beyond redeemable at that point, she, and she was a scared little kid. So she could have been, re uh, could have been redeemed, at once they figured it out. But Yo Yo took her chance away by getting wanting to get revenge and that is what it is like she's trying she's saying that uh she's saying i save the world is basically just a coping me mechanism because of what she actually did she doesn't want to accept what she actually did was revenge so but i understand getting revenge like ev like sure revenge is revenge and whatnot but i think yo yo kind of went to an extreme on to it because all she did was yo uh was Ru Ru Ruby actually took Yo-Yo's arm, so Yo-Yo her li takes her life, and she's always been this impulsive, reckless person, and the whole Slingshot ep uh, miniseries was about revenge, so it's not out of character for her to do this, but I just think it was kind of a bit t too, uh, what's it called, too an extreme, because just for an example, we have... Simmons was enslaved by Cassius and all that kind of stuff. Once she got out of, once she got freed and all that kind of stuff, she got her revenge by putting the same technology that was in her ear, in Cassius's ear, helping Mac get his revenge on Cassius for killing Yo-Yo in front of her or in front of him. So that was equal to what uh, their personalities was. But whereas Yo-Yo, she went one step further and took her uh, Robin's life or Ruby's life. Instead of just chopping off her arms or, or her legs or something like that. So it would be equal. But no. That's not how it happened. But I understand that like it was her like judgment was being clouded. So I can't really fault her for that. Like I would probably be in the same situation if I was like in that situation. I probably would have done probably the same thing in a way. If I was mad like hor I was mad at this person. So but yeah. That was all it for Easter eggs or references and whatnot. But for predictions, there was a, a funny prediction that I saw that the Lemons was pro uh, probably... Uh, there was a, a episode a couple, uh, in the earlier, in the earlier se season uh, where Daisy's fighting the Kree and, in the elevator. And the, he was holding Lemons and people were saying that's... Uh, and she knocks him out of her his hands or whatever. And people were saying that that was probably foreshadowing the, for the events of being denied, uh, for Deke being denied by D Daisy. So yeah, and we meet a new character called Agent Thomas, and he's most likely most likely going to be dead by the en end of the episode of next episode because it's the alien invasion episode. But yeah, and I wonder if uh, they could probably bring back Ruby because Ruby was uh, killed, and they we know that Kasai's uh, father is part of the Confederation, so they have Kree blood in that facility so maybe Hale could broker something that she could bring back uh, Ruby but I highly doubt it at this point so yeah and that was about it uh, for Easter eggs or references but comment down below if I missed any any uh, see ya